take a look at this next drop. Map number three, and Cam's first out of the plane. We'll see if that bodes well going into this map. A very similar plane line to what we witnessed in map number two. So teams in Actar Village Airport, they're going to have priority. And even over in the coveted H5, where Juki's typically lands. He's made history there, competing from that POI quite some time. Celebrates a lot of quick cash. But let's jump on board with DBZ out towards airport. Now, mind you, they had initially won this contest in map number two, so they're looking to pick up a couple more eliminations. Yeah, and this has been an early contested spot since the very beginning of this tournament. Azen versus DBZ. A fun fight, a difficult fight, two really good teams. And the question is, are they going to interact again? Are they going to try to push each other? Or are they going to grab their loot and move on? It looks like a lot of the same. Both teams think they can win this fight every single time, and so far it's 50-50. Look, you just got to go on confidence. You said it yourself. Goes confidence is key, and we need to have a little bit of consistency here because with that fight at the top of the leaderboard starting to get incredibly close now, just 15 points separating Team Biffle and Team Hisoka. Everything is going to need to matter, and Mutex J starting off to an incredibly strong round here. There are three squads nearby Team Savvy Ultras, just north of this trio of Chaos. Sirius and Moriko, they need to stand back, but Huskers and Mutex, they were able to get the high ground here at Observatory. Yeah, and again, this is a spot that Huskers and Mutex has been dropping into since the very beginning, right? They actually contested each other, I believe, in Stage 1, and then they, of course, they came together for the LCQs and made this kind of hodgepodge team. And they've played together before, but not a ton. And Jesus is an incredible third add into this. Mutex and Jesus had a little bit of Kim as well. Jesus actually went and hung out with Mutex. So they've got some chemistry. They've got a chance to prove themselves. But Sirius goes big and finds Jesus from distance to take it to a 3v2. Huskers and Mutex likely going to try to rotate out here. Looks like they actually might be splitting. Mutex might not see that there's a pathway out. And all of a sudden, this could be a very difficult fight for Mutex to take. Sure, he has high ground, but a 3v2, a streak landing on your head, what are you going to do? Mutex still has high ground, but he is going to be forced off of the roof. But when you have such good Yikes. ground loot off drop, CPA is able to grab the down and finish onto Mutex, sitting into the Gulag just early on. So Hunter Co., you know they had such a long journey to get here and so far have run headstrong into resistance. But Nico, Crowder, and Dez, your wild card winners out of NA, starting off really strong, just on the low ground, trying to dolphin dive behind cover so Nico can get back into with his team. Yeah, and that's CPA team. That's our Asia expansion region team. They play extremely aggressive, so it makes sense. They like observatory. Okay, Crowder, Let's phase up look, here. Take a look at Crowder. Uh, sniper, maybe not the signal, but we'll take it. Whatever you got in hand, find a down that's going to open up a pathway moving into the next building. Potentially could move into this fight. Uh, still a very difficult fight to push up on, and this could be one of those fights. Tiff, i got to sneak the word in at least once in this broadcast. This is a quagmire fight. They're going to be fighting this fight for a long time, and so Sometimes that's good, but most of the time that's bad. You might sit here and fight the same team for five, six minutes while a team like Hasoka has already wiped two full teams and then setting up for their in-game. They can see Goat and Co. able to call in their loadout, but Dez able to apply the pressure with the ground loot Cronin. And if you are going to get a ground loot weapon, getting the one with at least 50 rounds in the mag is going to be nice. It's going to be allowing them to put as much pressure as possible. But you're right, this fight isn't going anywhere anytime soon. But being able to whittle down your enemies, get all the plates out from them. But if they had one PA, one missile, everything would change the tide of that engagement. As you can see, Raiden and Adrian on the rooftop trying to take down CZR, but it's going to be one, but it's going to be another, and he drops them right at the IGL, able to capitalize on that and immediately fly in. Yeah, this is a great elimination because his team can do nothing about it. CZR goes down, but answers actually from a third party. Z Smith comes in from behind and wipes his former teammate. Aiden sent to the Gulag. Z Smith, Ebates, DJ Moss on the hunt and raided, knows they're coming. Look, if anyone's going to do it, having it be Z Smith is pretty nice. When you think about the storylines that he had going throughout the stages of World Series of Warzone, kind of came out of a semi-retirement, and he always knew, I have so much to prove. And knowing how many tournaments Z Smith has won throughout the history of Warzone, having him say, I am an underdog, is kind of scary, because we talk about everyone that has their own stories and what they have to prove. Z Smith, you know, this is the stage to do it on. Well, we've got Reaper, we've got Diego Soros, and Lage on your screen. Lage looking for an elimination here. Lage actually one of our 10 mouse and keyboard players as well. Coming through the expansion regions, Lage goes big. You can tell based on his sensitivity what he's able to do. Snapping around, having to fight against some of these controller players. 
bit of smoke. He doesn't get first shots down. Luckily, still alive, though. He's going to use the smoke to his advantage this time to get out of dodge and replay back up. You see all the smoke. Zaf in the distance, going to hit the parachute and try to expand out to another building. This is one of the toughest buildings, in my opinion, to push. But Hollow, he's going to jump out, try to get a different angle onto Lage. Not able to capitalize. Here we go. The shields are going to be cracked. And yes, it's a 2v2, but it's going to be Zaf that goes down. Lage last alive. In trouble, running away. Third place from the Brazil qualifiers. Has a chance here to stay alive and should be able to get out of dodge, but it's going to be difficult to not get hunted down. Lage might actually be readdressing. Back to Observatory, Tiff. Look who's here, Hasoka on main stage and trying to hunt down this Asia qualifying team. CPA, Sirius, Mariko looking to answer back, but down on the low ground. This is going to be a tough fight to win, and they actually might just take the tunnels out. Sometimes it's best to actually prioritize the disengage. Mayapo, though, already has the high ground. They've got loadout weapons. They're utilizing the buy station here at Observatory because you start to think, well, this POI is dead near center of the next zone. Where do you go from here? You want to wait and see because typically they are in that end game with some of the best positions. And similar to what we saw out of Biffle and Sage from map number two, just being able to get to the end game and have player advantage can be nice. But Invader, Sway, and Huntsing on the main stage here already with two eliminations and Clown in the Gulag. Yeah, those are two teams that I was talking to you before the broadcast, and they're like, nobody knows us, nobody respects us, we're here to prove our name, prove our worth, so excited to see if they're able to do that here on main stage against some of the best Warzone competition in the world. See TBE sneaking out of that fight. Everyone's still biding their time. Now, we have seen the first team fully eliminated. Question is, who is it, Tiff? 49 teams alive, and many of our teams, if not all of our teams, that are at the top of the leaderboard still up. Team Biffle, 48-point victory, and now a little layer cake action. You'll love to see it. DJ Moss, Ebay, Z Smith, a fun fight against Joe Woe's squad, seemingly with the advantage. Breadman going to sneak out of there. Limax, not sure he's able to yet. Limax doing a little bit of crouch walking, trying to figure out the best way to infiltrate oh. Team Ebates, but it's Limax from down under crawling to the mid-level of this building. Now, one thing when I was getting to talk to them, you know, I had a chance to stand down with Bread, Joe, Woe, and Limax. He's like, I just shoot my gun. I'm here to show out and shoot, and he's still infiltrating this building. Now, I've had this happen to me several times. If he's able to fully flank them, that's kind of scary, bro. Sneaky, sneaky. Can he catch an angle? I don't think they know he's here. Dude. Trigger Discipline's gonna hold on to it. If he can catch an angle here, he's getting some comms from his teammate. He's gonna sneak up! Is he gonna find it? Couple grenades? No! Goes for the nades instead of the gunshots. Could have maybe grabbed the knock there, but not sneaky enough. Gets the self-revive up, but Ebay should clean that up, no problem. Limax sent to the Gulag. Nice try, buddy, but not enough. See if we can get back onto the map. Let's go to the team at the top here as we try to get a little bit of some more information, Tiff. We always talk about how information is key, and there's a ton of ways to gain information. You can definitely interrogate a player if you're relatively safe, and it'll give you a live ping of the enemy teammates, so you can kind of focus that out, and Biffle gonna join in. You can see Shifty from that engagement is able to grab a gas mask. They all three have self res as your map two winners are in it for the wins, and they're going to do just that as Sage. To Morpheus, you know, their journey throughout World Series of Warzone was really tough. Even Goz, you cursed them once when they were on the building trying to get into the World Series of Warzone Global Finals by one point, Goz. And that was a full elimination on Jukies that they didn't get. So now here on the stage, in person, on the Global Finals, they are going up against a massive Titan, and Zakar cannot get away. Yeah, I wonder if this is what happened last night. We had a chance to interview them, right? They went down first, and they get wiped here again. They, I think they're full out of the lobby. Team Rocket can't catch a break, and it's because of Team Biffle going big, grabbing their early eliminations. Oh. They have a system, Tiff, and it's working. Speaking of systems, Crowder, Nico, and Dez, the way they're able to just stack buildings on the outer, looking to pick up eliminations and not necessarily worry about playing that center of zone, which is an aggressive way to play, and I respect it, but already pulling up one elimination, two gas masks, but Dez, no plates to their name, but a signal 50 in hands, of course, I would expect nonetheless for Crowder to be the anchor running it, being able to kind of control the method of the madness, and Tenix squad rotating in, just parachuting down. They're going to run into Kong, but they're able to get a knock into a full of cleaning and fighting their way in. 
Strunk is in trouble, and it's a nice knock, but Solitude, not sure you're going to be able to do much here. If you're crowded, if you're Nico, you need these elim eliminations. Again, a team that traditionally plays in-game well, but it struggles to find a ton of eliminations. Of course, they won the wild card map, which was the one and done. If you're the last team standing, you make London. They made it in the final moments. They've been practicing for a wild now. And let's take a look at our map view. Of course, you can take a look at the map view as well with the Call of Duty Echo Twitch channel. Go check it out if you want to see that view. And it's a fairly central zone. It looks like Observatory is still inside the zone, so you know Hisoka's happy about that one. Crowder and them, they pick up another Tommy going at it against Intex in the kill feed. So off hand, you have to think about the rotation of where we're moving to. The teams at Observatory will have that eastern side priority, but for the teams coming in from Village, Shireen Pass, they are going to have that high ground disadvantage as you climb up Observatory. And just like the end game in map number two is going to be Hydro with other teams that are all congested there, rotating out of it. But Team Savvy Ultras on your screen, 47 squads remaining here on the outskirts of Village, one of those teams that will have to rotate through Observatory. Yeah, they had a nice start in the first map, but couldn't really catch a break in the last one, and seemingly a little bit of a blender earlier. Heard that maybe Savvy Ultras even lost his Gulag, but got Bob back. There's a ton of ways to get your teammates back, so make sure you can do that, and of course, to have player advantage. It's necessary in these moments, especially playing outer zone like Gooey, Clapson, Goat, DJ. Blade actually in trouble from Aiden. Would love to check back over to that fight and see what's happening. Here it is. Observer's on point. Aiden was able to get the better of one. He split up Blade from Vortex and Savvy Ultras and took care of business. However, Savvy Ultras answers back with a signal 50 kill on Adrian. It's a 2v2. Aiden and Raided versus the former World Series of Warzone champions from EU. Let's see if they can do it again. Raided on low ground. Aiden mounted up looking for an elimination. Oh, Savvy, the bait and switch. Here's the deal. Aiden was able to suppress fire for Raiden, who jumped down, went for the buyback onto Adrian, but unfortunately will lose their life in the meantime. But Aiden, with the flare, will be able to bring them back. But the same goes for Blade. He was immediately brought back by his teammates. But chalk it up, Aiden not able to get the down there, but they know. And there's a medic vest on the distance. So we talk about the different med vests that are available, able to grab a gas mask. And some teams even filter through those different types of vests where, hey, if you got to hit the res on a team, you want the medic, you want a quicker res, but they've got comms, they've got stealth, and Aiden on the rooftop still. Let's take a quick listen in with Team Aiden and hear some of their comms. I know the team at home are going to love this, and the people in the stadium might be booing them. Can we just play Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got it. Cool, calm, and collected is what Aiden and Raided are always. The Cheddar Brothers having played together for years now and earned, well, a lot of Cheddar. <laughs> Hundreds of thousands of dollars earned, not between both of them, but singly. Uh, each of them having earned well over $300,000 and trying to add an extra $100,000 on top of that here today. You can see the map increased view on your screen. You can see all the teams having to rotate in. Observatory outside of the next zone. We are headed over to Saeed City and outside of caves here, Tiff. Now look, this is going to be so tough. You're going to have Aiden. They're actually electing to grab the high ground, which is nice here for them at Observatory because you can kind of parachute off onto the other side, but you're going to run the risk of going through the river. If there's anyone that's going to have a beautiful advantage in that next zone, it's going to be the teams that have made it already into Saeed City that have the ultimate high ground. But you can see Mayapo from a distance playing on the cliffs outside of Observatory, and there goes Kong. A one, two, down and out. We knew that was going to be the issue with the signal 50 but for another issue it's the fact that 
Huskers taking on Tony White, man. For everything they've been going through early game, their ability to regain is exponential. Yeah, I've been very impressed with Huskers team's ability to stabilize. I've seen them hunted down time and time again from TBE, and yet all three are alive and trying to take this fight from potentially multiple angles. We'll see if they can hit a couple jump spots up or they're just going to all push up together. Sweezy's team, of course, has the advantage here being that they have the high ground, some pinches. And if you take too long here, Tiff, I'm worried about a third party. There's a ton of teams close by that could potentially do it. Here are the jump spots I was talking about, looking for any angle they can get a chance to shoot through those windows and find their prey. Speaking of prey, Clutch Belk uh, very much so in trouble as the team near the top of the leaderboard, quick wipe of DBZ. It doesn't look like a full team wipe, but certainly not one you're happy about. Yeah, but Skull on zero, and we're already on circle number four. And the issue with that being is they need to be able to maintain the pace that Team Biffle has set. Yes, Yes, they won map number one, but Team Biffle answered back in map number two, and now well into map number three. Biffle is just extending and capitalizing on that lead that they've already created, and Shifty, the former member of the Stage 1 roster with Soka and Skull, finding so much success here alongside Sage and Biffle. Yeah, this is a tough one. Now, I did just see, I think it was Savvy Ultra's team that was full wiped out of this map. So not going to be a great one. We just missed out on the multiplier. We're just now inside the multiplier. Shifty and Sage are missing one, so they're going to play patient here and hopefully just pick up a couple picks as teams try to rotate in. There's Castillo, one of the other teams, fantastically performing today from Mexico in third place going into this map with Deus Amir, a team uh, that a lot of people were watching out for, but there was really a lot more chatter around the second place team from Mexico, which is Panda and Goat Clamp, who are nowhere to be seen, at least at the very least inside of top five. So we'll see what they can do in this map as Ahsoka continues to push the equation, continues to push the pace. If you're dictating pace, usually you're on top. The problem is when the team's on top of you, you're going to be in trouble. High ground is everything. Gets caught out in the open. Skullface has to go big from his position. Finessin, Braxton, not going to make that easy. Skullface in trouble. We're at risk of being sent out of this map. Oh, Skull in trouble. No flare in sight. And this is what they were talking about with Team Soka. Their ability to get out of fights with at least one of them. That's why they're like, that's so hard to kill. But for Nessin, Empathy, Braxton, let me just tell you, they just made it look so so easy to take them out and they hit the redeploy drone and continue on the rotation. Team 25 taking to the skies, trying to get across the river. They'll do so, but it's Shifty, it's Sage just answering back, finding it doesn't matter. They just get a chance to angle, they just throw down. Two members will fall, one still standing, but Sage has to prioritize healing. The question is, where is Shifty and can they stack this? Tiff, we have 26 teams alive and Sage is on 10 eliminations. Two players alive, Biffle's nowhere to be seen, and it doesn't matter. They slay out when they need to. Unbelievable performance from this team. It almost doesn't even matter what their multiplier is. They stabilize at the top of this leaderboard because their main competition, Team Hisoka, is out of this game without a great map to show for it. Yeah, but the issue is they have 10 seconds and they are not in circle. They have to move, so look at King AJ. They have to be able to clear out the right side because the squad that's in the top five just ahead of them, Deuce Amir, is in the building that they want, and even then, they will still have to keep moving to that eastern side. Squad number five, that's gonna be FIFA kill, is already positioning themselves well into zone, but Sage and Biffle, your map two winners, they're gonna have to get there. That's yeah, a big wrap, gas mask star everything, and it looks like they both have one, at least for the moment. Sage, Shifty, you see Wars trying to push the fight. Shifty and Sage are having to fight back, and Shifty goes down, so it's gonna be all up to Sage. Answers to Wars and finds another with the PA. Another team wipe going to Sage. Now the entire onus of responsibility on his back to stay alive and continue to creep up this multiplier. A massive map yet again. Last alive for his team. What can he do as there's a ton of teams on the other side of these walls? Burning through the gas mask. Does need to stay inside out of the gas. He was pilfering through the loot to try and do his best to find a flare to no avail. But now you have to play your life and just crawling in through the smoke, through the chaos. But it's going to be Deuce Amir at top five squad and help over the back, but it doesn't matter. Sage is just better. No health. 
and a couple plates just inside the zone. The gas mask is gone. It's gonna have to fight the team in third. No! Mexico on top. Sage goes down. It's still a fantastic map. They're gonna be at the top of the leaderboard, but it's the Mexico team winning their Mexico qualifier. Still alive. Deus Samir last alive for his team. A team wipe to boot. Mexico going big. I really respect the ability from Sage to try and hit that mobile buy, but to no avail, but still, the Titans, the prodigal son, Tommy, on your screen, returning to the copper box, looking to find success, but you gotta get through the end game first. 12 squads remaining, and they seem to be at least north of eight eliminations, but with having to fight forward, utilizing Semtex, you can only imagine how to clear out a building. No connects, so they're making sure they can check, is anyone still inside this building? Can they get it for free? They actually can get it for free. You're gonna have Clown on the other side. He would love to grab a knock here, and he knows they're in there. There's the grenade knock. TBE, they call themselves TBE because they're the best ever. Tommy goes big for eight currently and should find a ninth. They've got high ground position. They've got player advantage. Tiff, this could be the map they need to creep inside not only the money, but potentially the top 10. The money starts at top 25, so halfway through the lobby, and now you've got them on the roof. You hear the signal 50, but Team Braxton, they're not gonna let TBE take it so easily as Braxton absolutely turns on that guy, able to get just inside before falling, but Finesse and capitalizing on the rest of Team Huskers. This is such a fun team to watch. Again, another team that on paper are underdogs, but really, can you call anyone underdogs in this stadium? They've earned the right to be here, and they have a chance to go big to win map three, but you've got to go through the behemoths that are TBE, who have the clear advantage. Signal 50 in hand, sure, you'll connect, but can you find a knock and a full wipe? You love to drop some of these teams of three down to two. Gain every advantage you can. They don't get the zone pull, but it's still not a bad one because they've got angles and they've got, at least Tommy's got a gas mask to use. We're into the top five as Team oh. FIFA kill goes down and guess who's got the pull? It's going to be Team Braxton, but TBE look to capitalize on that, but they don't have any Semtex. They've got to do it with the Lockman. It closed the distance. Braxton Chow, he takes down, and Tommy with the signal 50, angering for the squad, hits yep. the Hail Mary flare before he goes down. Did it connect because Noobs is landed. He hits the flare. We knew it was going to be a flare warfare, and Stukex able to end Team Lovey, and now we're into the final three. TBE not only got everyone back with flares, now we've lost noobs, and Almond gets shot out of the eye. Uh, the sky is just Tommy last alive. Uh, what we thought could be a TBE victory now, all signs are pointing to Team Braxton. No, Benzie Boogs going huge, Finesse in falls. It's Tommy versus Boogs, and there's one other team remaining. Who else is floating in the sky? It is Braxton, still up. Tiff, three teams, four players. Tommy fighting some weapons. We saw another member hitting the mobile buy. We're getting Finessen back to join Braxton, and he was able to grab a sub on the roof. What looked dire for Team Braxton is starting to look a little better because he was able to grab a signal as well. Boogs and Stukex, you may have the high ground, but we're doubling down. Tommy with the starter. Tommy knocks Braxton before he gets traded out by Finessen, but Finessen doing his best to anchor. This is looking so good for them, and they take it. They take game number three. Map three victors. Team Braxton go massive. Zone pull, but thinking on their feet. Congratulations. Another omit victory. Omit on top, Goosh? Omit on top. Something about those players are just performing different on land. We've seen it throughout all of the stages. Stage one, stage two, last chance qualifiers, they were all remote. And the questions were asked, would our players be able to perform on land, on this stage, in front of a crowd, more than 2,500 people in the building cheering them on, and they're locked. It's an incredible team that's come together. A fellow Tennessean with Braxton, Finesse, been in the scene since way before Warzone, even into Blackout, and yet they're still proving that they're one of the best here, here on main stage. Map three victors. That's huge for their point totals. I'm gonna have to look back and see where they were. I don't think they were in the top 10, Tim, but you can see the excitement on his face. They're pumped about that one. Look, I'm pumped, right? You have to think about the journey that our players have made. They've been grinding, crawling for whatever tournament they could get their hands on. But to perform and take a coveted win, a map win on LAN, is something that hardly anyone can say. And so far, we've had three different winners. Soka, 
map number one, Biffle, map number two, and Braxton taking map number three. Look, I gotta give a shout out to TBE as well. They stayed alive as long as possible. They had a fantastic map. They grabbed a massive multiplier. Tommy had 11 or 12 eliminations by himself. They're back. The question is, where are they on that leaderboard? Braxton, the same. Where are you? You could have a fantastic third map, but if you don't have a first, you don't have a second, you're dropping some goose eggs, you're dropping some five-point games, it's not gonna be enough to maybe earn your way so to some money, but not earn your way to $100,000 at the top of this leaderboard. Especially during map number one, we were looking to see what that first team eliminated from our entire global land would be. I was not expecting Frankie to give TBE the coveted wooden spoon. And you can tell Tommy didn't really like it because now they're answering back. And honestly, if you're not gonna get that 2X multiplier, that Empathy and Braxton were able to get for the map win, a 1.8 is still pretty good. But let's go ahead and take a look at that HyperX victory moment. This moment, Tiff, and as Tommy with the pistol in hand, doing everything he can. This is the flare meta that we're in, right? Of course, you've got the 3-2-1 meta with the signals, but when you've got flares in the in game, for a moment, you have a bit of reprieve flying up into the sky. But the question is, can you land on weapons? This is a key moment looking back at this victory. Braxton was able to find not only a Lockman sub, but also a signal. Gets a couple shots down lane, and guess who's alive to back him up? It's Finessin. Tommy cleaned up by Finessin from distance to keep Brax alive. Down, but not out. Finessin alive, they clean up the victory. Very well done to think on their feet. Sure, they played the last circle well, but thinking on their feet at the end was what won them that victory. Not only were they able to find weapons, but it's Braxton who comes back in, lands on the mobile buy station, gets himself a Lockman SMG, a Signal 50, and a buyback to bring his team in. So now I know that Frankie is on the floor.